glorify you, the great and mighty King. We entreat you, O Holy Spirit of God, to make manifest your presence in the majestic and wonderful name of Jesus. We yield to your direction, your guidance, your purpose, and your will in this time together that we might be further enhanced in our walk with the Lord. We might be made more useful for the kingdom. We walk in the fullness of your purposes in the earth. In Jesus' name. We glorify thy name, O Lord. For worthy, worthy art thou, O God. There is none like you. His arm is strong to deliver. The mighty God, the everlasting Father. Hallelujah. We praise you. We glorify you. Give praise unto the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. 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 You be blessed. You may be seated. Hallelujah. Well, we go ahead and share us live. Get everybody watching us. Praise God. Hallelujah. Oh, come on. God is good. Somebody say, God is good. All the time. All the time. God is good. Hallelujah. All righty. Well, we're glad to have you this morning. This is um, uh, the second Sunday of December. We, uh, we won't be having service in two weeks. So that Sunday and the following Wednesday of Christmas week, we will not have services. Show up, uh, it won't be the rapture. If it was rapture, we'd all know it then by then because we'd all be together up in the sky. Amen? Hallelujah. So uh, there's not going to be any seek us. Uh, that's right. We'll, we'll know that we were raptured. We won't, we won't be having church. Uh, if you didn't make it and you show up and uh, we did get raptured, uh, don't wait. Let's go ahead and get that fixed before then. Let's not get in that situation. Amen? Hallelujah. So we're glad, we're glad you guys came out today. Um, I know, you know, for some, I don't know how your situation is. I, I heard from the northern side of the county, got a lot more than we did in the southern. Um, it was still bad. I mean, you know, Friday, it was, it was, pretty, it was pretty rough out there on Friday. And, um, you know, um, you know and, uh, but the northern side. So I don't know if they'll have the rest of the school tomorrow or not. Uh, melting and black ice. Yeah. After Friday's events, they're probably going to be real careful. Yeah, that's right. And um, so we had, there was five bus wrecks, bus is stranded. Uh, one bus driver that got, had to be taken to the hospital, so um, because they tur the bus turned over. Oh yeah, and um, so anyway, we'll just let that one let them figure that one out. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. We're glad you're here. Glad you got out, and came out, and uh, uh, we were running late this morning. I apologize. I went out to my van to get it to pull up and put all the equipment in it, and the doors were frozen, and. Um, and I uh, couldn't get the doors open to get the stuff in, so I had to, I, get, I could get the drivers open, but I uh, had to let it warm up for a while to work my way into the vehicle. Hallelujah. And uh, so uh, that is not the glory on my head. If you're watching on television, that is just sunlight coming across. Let's see if we can get out of the glory there. Hallelujah. Uh, well, you know, you know they do. Well, anyway, we'll just leave that. All right. Praise God. So don't forget. Um, now, out, outside after church. Uh, we have um, our Christmas presents for you from the church, and uh, it, you know, there's, your name is on the end, so just don't go grab a box, okay? Your names are on the end of, the, of, of them so that uh, we want to make sure that that's how we'll know who didn't get them. In the past, we just kind of went, who got them, who didn't? Uh, this year, we're going to make sure we know that who didn't so we can make sure they get theirs. Hallelujah. And uh, so we don't run out the door without getting your present. Uh, just, just a small token to say we love you and appreciate you. And we want you blessed, hallelujah, coming into the new year. Amen? Glory to God. This time, let's go ahead and receive our tithe and offering. And uh, if you need an envelope, raise your hand. If you don't need an envelope and you're giving with a uh, check or using square cash or, or PayPal, go ahead and send that in. Hallelujah. And um, praise the Lord. Can you say amen? And uh, I got, I got uh, exciting news. I got the pick line out this week. Hallelujah. Amen. That was a joyous occasion. Hallelujah. I was able to take a shower. 
Oh, seven weeks without a shower was just long, a long time. Yeah, because I, I couldn't get it wet. It could not get wet. Huh? Well, I was cleaning up, Melanie. Good gracious. It's like I told my, I told my brother, I said, listen, I, my sweat don't stink because I ain't got no bacteria on me. I'm a bacteria-free zone. <laughs> so much, I had so much stuff in my body. I, I'm a bacteria-free zone. <laughs> Hallelujah. I mean, you could probably, you could probably pour uh, something on me that didn't smell good, it would die because I, so, I was so bacteria-free. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. I mean, Lysol had nothing on me. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. But uh, God is good. We're moving along. We're progressing well. The doctors keep telling me that my toe is getting better every time I go visit them. And uh, they'll say things like, I didn't think we were, uh, I, was, I didn't think he was going to make it or it wasn't going like I, but it's just getting better every time. Hallelujah. Amen. And um, we, we are the healed of the Lord. Amen. And, um, you know, the devil's not getting anything off of me. I'm, I'm healed and I'm whole. Amen. I, 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 all appendages stay. I think I told you my brother told me about a few weeks ago, he called me digits. I said, what are you talking about? He said, you know, nine digits. I said, no, 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 no. That's not even funny. I said, he was just trying to be funny. I said, oh, that's not even funny. I said, nope, not funny. I'm keeping my toe. He ain't said it since. I love him. But you're, no, you're, I'm not letting you say that. No, sir. That ain't, that ain't happening. Amen. All right. Y'all ready to give? Amen. You know, Jesus said, A given it shall be given unto you. Good measure pressed down, shaken together, running over something, and given to your bosom. Amen. So, Father, we thank you as the people tithe, as they give offerings into the kingdom of God. We thank you they're blessed abundantly, and heaven's windows are open unto them, and you empty out blessings they don't have room enough to receive. In Jesus' name, amen. And amen. I don't know if y'all posted how to give online out there, have you? Um, okay. Those, those of you who are out online, if you, um, if you have a PayPal account, you can give through PayPal to, um, what is our PayPal? Donations at fbc.org. Uh, you can go to Square Cash and sign up, and then we are also dollar sign Faith Victory. We're going to have the word and in there, so Faith Victory Church. You can go to Square Cash and give that way. Um, or if you want to send a check, P.O. Box 7752, Greensboro, North Carolina, 27417. That's through snail mail. Amen. But praise the Lord. So if you, if you want to be a part of giving here, that's fine. Uh, donate. PayPal, if you have PayPal, that's really easy. Donations at FBC.org. Praise the Lord. And this time, we're going to dismiss Children's Church, uh, all of our little guys, and youth. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Youth. Youth. All right, praise God. Go ahead and open your Bibles, if you will, um, to the uh, third. Let's go back to 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Hallelujah. Verse 1 says, now concerning spiritual things of and pertaining to the Holy Ghost, hallelujah, and uh, <laughs> Penny's sister wanted, hey, Polly, uh, she, she's been watching, wanted to uh, uh, let us know that she's watching, and we, we say, we give you a shout out for watching, thank you, and uh, glad you could be with us today, praise the Lord. Um, now concerning spiritual gifts or things of and pertaining to the Holy Ghost, brethren, I would not have you ignorant. You know that you were Gentiles carried away into these dumb idols, even as you were led. We said last week all idols are dumb. Hallelujah. Wherefore, I give you to understand that no man speaking by the Spirit of God calleth Jesus accursed. And no man can say that Jesus is Lord but by the Holy Ghost. Now, there are diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit. There are differences of administrations, but the same Lord. Spirit is to give us an advantage. Hallelujah. What do we mean advantage? Not that we know of an advantage.
heaven at Saint River Baptist. That's not what he's talking about. So don't don't get don't get weirded out on me. No, it gives us an advantage in the things of the Spirit over the enemy. Amen. To the manifestation of the Spirit, it gives the church advantage over the enemy. Glory to God. He manifests to give us that advantage. He manifests to, uh, you know, to work in ways that the world um, doesn't understand, but it gives us an advantage over the workings of the enemy against their lives. Amen. Hallelujah. And you know, uh, the church is supposed to live by faith. Now, let me say this. Because oftentimes, the church spends more time trying to get things in their lives accomplished through the gifts of the Spirit for them instead of living by faith and having the gifts of the Spirit operate through them to give us an advantage of men reaching the world. God, now listen, God, I understand. God will minister to His people. We are to grow and to learn and to live in grace and to learn by faith and to learn how to receive on our own. Can you say amen? And our mission, our calling, our equipping is to go out and preach the gospel and reach the nations. Now, let me say something. If you haven't noticed yet, we're in a battle in America. People are turning to witchcraft and the sorcery. They're turning to the, the demonic powers um, for one reason has lost its advantage, has lost understanding the power of the Holy Ghost. We've given up very large portion of advantage through bad teaching in the church. Hello? Through, you know, by trying to be cute and, and carnal and, uh, you know, uh, adaptable to the world system. And we've turned in our advantage now, Dad Hagen, um, some of y'all have read the book, or seen, have at least heard of the book, Plans, Purposes, and Pursuits. And I believe I have the year right. But about a week before the 1987 camp meeting out there in Tulsa, the Lord appeared to Brother Hagen and began to talk to him. And in that vision, he, um, he shared with him and, and made this statement that the church had substituted brass for gold. And in that, the Lord told him that clapping was neither praise nor worship. You know, it's, it's a form of ma ma uh, manly adoration or acceptance or, a or uh, you know, whatever. But it wasn't praise or worship. Now, hey, listen, he got called by a false prophet by worship magazines and all this kind of stuff. I mean, they, they went after him with everything they had because it was messing with their turf. So you've got to be able to receive correction from the Lord if it messes with your turf. Amen. I'm, I'm serious. But in that, what, what, he was, what was coming in, and even then, then, the Lord was trying to correct it before it got out of hand, and it still got out of hand because people didn't listen. Is that we were moving into a place where we were substituting brass for gold. In other words, we were substituting a man method for what God really wanted or God really desired of the things of the Spirit. They that worship Him must worship Him in spirit and in truth. And so we got, you know, and we started getting, you know, let's, let's, you know, let's have us a smoke machine and disco balls and, you know, let's do Christmas programs where the girl's got a mini skirt on when they pick her up in and, and, and her Las Vegas show style Christmas song. You can see her whole backside. Oh, she had on one of them little panty things. Well, who cares? The inappropriateness of the, of the, and the church you know, and they took heat for it, and they, they, the people took heat for it, and they just defended it, you know. And people say things like, oh, they did, just if they love the Lord, that's all that matters. Well, then, you know, about two-thirds of Paul's writings will be torn out of the Bible if that's all that matters. Hello. We've gotten more caught up in the church with how we look, hello, than where we are Spending our time, and I'm talking about spiritually, in his presence, in his glory. The, the savor of his presence gives us an advantage. You're dressing like the world, being whatever, I mean, acting like the world, looking like the world does not give you an advantage of ministry. Yeah. 
We've adopted that mindset in a lot of places, but it's error. Jesus did not come out looking like a tax collector, a fisherman. Hello? He wore rabbinical clothing. And yet he could eat with the publicans and sinners in that clothing and minister to them because it was not him being like them. It was his ability to go to them and have something that touched them. Well, what was it? And he withdrew himself and prayed all night. He spent time in the presence of the Father. He spent time in the glory. And when he came to humanity, it didn't matter what kind of clothes he had on. Remember that when they said this, they said that they, they were listening to him because he spoke not as the scribes of the Pharisees, but as one possessing authority. Or had, spoke with one who had authority. What made his words authoritative? It was the, the anointing in his life. It was the presence of the, of, the, of the, remember this? Jesus stripped himself of his rights to deity and glory and walked among us as a man. Hallelujah. And when he walked, he was anointed by the Holy Ghost. He said, when he quoted Isaiah, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he's anointed me. So the manifestation of the Spirit has been given to the church to empower and enable us and give us an advantage in ministry to the world. Amen. And so we need to, you know, if we're going to be Pentecostal, charismatic, word of faith, we need to get back to being Pentecostal, charismatic, word of faith. Now, what am I talking about? What, what brought those moves of God to the forefront and swept the world was the hunger of people to be in the presence of God and have his anointing upon their lives. Now, I've, I've had some times this week in my car riding around. I, uh, we sang, you know, Lord, send the rain last week. And, you know, that we, Carmen has a video online. We did it live. I've listened to that thing about 30 times this week. And just seen, just in my, my vehicle driving. And I don't have a car. I drive a Jeep. Riding around in my Jeep. And, and the pre just singing and worshiping God. But the thing that keeps striking me is that whole place, all those people just standing out there. Lord, send the rain. Pour out your spirit. Let the fire fall. Heal us one and all. Fall fresh on me. Thousands of people. You, you could, the anointing is, is eternal. The anointing still comes out of that video. Why? Because there's something about being in the presence of God. As we said last week, Sister Wilkinson prophesied, said, my, you're, the atmosphere calleth. It calleth. And so, we in the church, and we can't listen. We, we're not responsible for what other denominations or other churches do or don't do. We're responsible to hear what God's saying and speaking to us. I'll tell you, if people would get back to he that has ears to hear, let him hear what the Spirit saith to the churches, they'd be hearing something different than some of the narratives that are being presented by leadership in some places. The voice of the Spirit ooze the church the heart of the Father. We're in His presence. There is fullness of joy. Oh, His glory upon our lives. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to everyone to give us an advantage. And He goes on to list the different nine gifts or manifestations of the Spirit. Look with me, if you will. down into, uh, let's look at 1 John 4. I don't know if that's the roof cracking or somebody's up walking around. <laughs> 1 
1 John 4, 4 says, Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits whether they are of God. For many false prophets are gone into the world. Now, let me say this. False prophets aren't going to come into your midst wearing the, the, the uh, pentagrams or whatever those the, the demonic the witchcraft symbols are with the horns on their head and, you know, 666 tattooed on the forehead and, you know, come in dressed like, like some gothic, you know, demon-possessed person going, you know, I'm of the devil and, and prophesy. False prophets are those who present themselves as voices from God. But speak by the wrong spirit. Can you say amen? Well, they said they're a Christian. I believe them. Jesus said you're known by their fruit. Hello? He said hello. There are many false prophets in, in, in the earth today who speak as the, who proclaim. Now remember, remember in the book of Acts? Philip went down to Samaria and preached Christ. People giving heed to him, both hearing and seeing the miracles which he wrought. And, and as much as the lame, you know, lame walk. They, and, um, and then when Jerusalem heard that they had received, uh, uh, that they had been born, they had received the word of God, they sent unto them Peter and John, who were there, would come down and lay hands on them, they might be filled with the Holy Ghost. And there's one Simon, the sorcerer, who had bewitched the people. To the point they said he has the great power of God. When he saw that through the laying on the hands that the Holy Ghost was given, he offered them money, saying, Give me this power also that whosoever I lay my hands might receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. And Peter said, uh, um, Thy money perish with thee, for thou hast neither lot nor part in this matter. Okay? He bewitched the people to the degree they thought it was of God. You don't think that's happening in the church today? There's false prophets. There's those, there's those who speak falsely. And the church, because so many cases, they've watered down and gotten so dumbed down spiritually. I'm not saying they're dumb. Dumbed down because they accept so much stuff. Oh, they accept narratives that they don't study the Bible for themselves. They don't pray in the Holy Ghost for themselves. They don't spend time in the presence of God. To be able to try the spirit that's in manifestation and operation. There's stuff that's gone on in the church that was accepted by people that was not God. We get lying signs and wonders in the church. Well, the devil has no, now see, there are people who say that the devil has no power to do false miracles. Do we need to go back to Moses before Pharaoh? All the magicians of Pharaoh copied all the miracles of Moses. Except the last one. Now we know that Moses' rod swallowed up the two serpents of the rods of the, of the magicians of the Pharaoh. But they kept copying the miracles. There's lying signs and wonders. You all here, you've gone home. We got to know if it's the Holy Ghost or not. We've had people in, men, in quote, ministry going around and operating in familiar spirits that people think it's the word of knowledge. Hello? I've been in services where my stomach got turned by people who were doing stuff. Something's just not right. There was one minister going around everybody, and everybody just thought he was the greatest but thing since peanut butter sliced bread with some jelly on it. Grape jelly, that's right. Peanut, peanut butter, and jelly. And Y'all remember that song by the Elephant Show? <laughs> well, we had kids at that time, small kids at that time, it was on television. First you take the peanut butter, and y'all, <laughs> you spread it, you spread it. All right. But he was the greatest, hottest, greatest thing on the planet. Everybody was just so excited about how wonderful he was. Turned out to be a homosexual. Hit up on when we had somebody traveling with him that I knew personally. Traveled with him for a little while. Um, and then he stopped traveling with him because the guy, the guy made it, hit up on him, tried to get him to, yep, 
Get in bed with him. Oh, yeah. Raking in the money. Raking in the money. Raking in the money. I'm going to tell you something, people. If you learn to listen, this is not being judgmental. This is not being, um, uh, you know, you got a judgmental spirit. No, by the spirits. If we're going to have this true, genuine manifestation of God, we got to know what's right and what's not right and be able to say, hey, that's not God. Amen. And people, you know, uh, they, they, there, was a, there was a guy, uh, actually, and I, it just keeps happening. We keep having people who are, who are homosexuals uh, and, and seducing the others. I believe there's more to that homosexual spirit than just sexual perversion. And uh, he was on one of the major Christian networks at the time. For weeks and weeks, every night he was there. And they just call a lot of people, and he would tell them everything about him every time. And they take up offerings. After all that stuff got hyped up, then they took up an offering. Now's a good time to take an offering. Hello? You can't sell the anointing. And we receive offerings in the church services. Okay? But we don't. Try to hype the people up, and then right just at the right pinnacle of time, stop whatever's going on. Now it's a good time to take up an offering. No. you got to give by faith. You're going to give because you've been hyped. Hello? Y'all here? You gone home? You got to know what spirit's in operation. And that guy went on for weeks and weeks and weeks, and he would just, he'd sit there the whole time. They'd, have, they, you know, they'd, go, they'd do some stuff, and then he'd get up and just start Call the people out of the audience and tell them where they lived, you know, what kind of job they had, all this kind of stuff. To what end? To what end? There was never an end to it, except that he was doing it. Jesus wasn't being magnified, but they were raking in the buckolas. Hello? You might know who I'm talking about. <laughs> Brother Bill, do you know, you know, remember that? Yep. The end is not to get huge offerings. Jesus said, and this is why it's important that when we, then we're, we're sensitive to the Spirit, we try the spirits, we know what spirit we're of. Because the end is, if I, Jesus said, if I be lifted up from the earth, I will draw all men unto me. The end has to be the magnification of the redemptive work of Jesus Christ, the master, the head of the church, to draw men unto him to get them born again, to bring them into the kingdom, not to put a stamp of greatness on your ministry or bring, bring in a bunch of bucks and money. For there are many false prophets, many. Hello? Hello? have gone out into the world. Hereby know ye the Spirit of God, every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. And every spirit that confesses not that Jesus Christ in the flesh is not of God. And this is the spirit of Antichrist, wherever you've heard that it should come, even now is already in the world. How, how do we recognize can't understand error unless you know truth. Is that, a, is that an amen? Huh? That's right. That's right. If you're doing an experiment, one of, one of the things that scientists do whenever they do an experiment is they create a baseline. Got to have a baseline. You got to have a standard by which you measure everything else from to determine whether there is variables or changes in what's going on. Without that baseline, they don't know. Our baseline is the truth. Our baseline is truth, and the, we're not preaching the word anymore. You got Christian musicians just standing up and say things like. Oh, you know, Jesus probably lied about creation because it, it was already accepted that God had created, and he didn't want to just up, up, uh, bring the whole religious world upheaval. 
And you've got people get on Facebook and defend him. And still go listen to the music. I wouldn't listen to a thing he said. Well, he's got good music. I don't care. There's a spirit of error on him to say things like that. And to use his platform to express that kind of garbage that Jesus lied? He was tempted in every point like we are yet without sin. Lying is a sin. How do you know? The word says, I rely or have the part in the lake of fire. Satan's the father of all liars. So for some hipster, cool, quote, Christian artist to come out and say Jesus probably lied to protect the religious community, we need to have an album, a CD, or MP3 burning party. I wouldn't listen to him. I'd rather listen to Brother Hagin said, I'd rather listen to a donkey bray in a tent mart at midnight than listen to such junk as that. But because we have so many people uneducated in spiritual and scriptural things, and they've adopted the narrative, well, just as long as they love the Lord, that's all that matters. There's no trying of the spirits behind things. We want the glory manifest. And the glory doesn't manifest in the midst of of a church that, in, that, that accepts and embellishes lies. Hello. So what we have to be diligent to be students of the Word, to be partakers of the gift of the Holy Ghost and to build ourselves up on our most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. To not be drunk with wine, wherein is excess, but to be being filled with the Spirit, speaking to ourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, making melody in our heart unto the Lord. If we're going to recognize error, we're going to have to know and live the truth. We're not witch hunters trying to go after people who are in error. But we got to know what's error. And we got to be able to steer people away from error with the spirit of truth. And the truth is all the truth, not just part of it. Amen. But people are so caught up with the culture of the church today, of, of being a worldly church. It's like almost like they don't even know. Like what we said before in the past, if the Holy Ghost came in with a with a Kelly green blazer and uh, pink shirt, and white pants, and white shoes, and a cat with a red feather in it, we wouldn't recognize the Holy Ghost if you walked in looking like that. They wouldn't know it was him. Are you here? They could tell that man Simon was not of God. They they thought he was God. They thought he was of God. People say, the Bible says that in the last days there'll be seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Seducing means that people who shouldn't be have become seduced by something. And the reason they're being seduced is not spending enough time with the spirit of truth and the truth. And you can be seduced. Amen? So what do we do? Well, Jude 20, verse 1, chapter 1, verse 20 says, But ye, beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. Well, we know from 1 Corinthians 12 and 14 that praying in the Holy Ghost or praying in the Spirit is praying in other tongues. Paul writes in the 14th chapter of the book of 1 Corinthians, he said, What is it then? I'll pray with the Spirit and I'll pray with the understanding. I'll sing with the Spirit, and I'll sing with the understanding. Amen? He said, I also said that chapter, he said, How be it, uh, he, he that prayeth in an unknown tongue speaks mysteries to God. Amen? Amen? He that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaketh not unto man, but unto God. How be it in the Spirit, 
He speaks mysteries to God. So we have here in the in, in Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter 14, telling us that prayer in the Spirit. See, some people say, well, that just means fervent prayer. That's not what the Bible says. Now, I believe you can be fervent in prayer and be anointed by the Spirit. At that, but praying in the Spirit, according to the Word of God, is praying in tongues. And Jude says to build ourselves up on our most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. How be it, Jesus? Why? Because Jesus said of the Spirit, how be it, indeed, the Spirit of truth has come. Amen? And one of the things the Spirit of truth was going to do was to bring us into remembrance of everything that he said. He's not going to give you revelations like Jesus lied. Can we tell you what spirit that is? No man confesses that Jesus is the Christ except by the Holy Ghost. That spirit, that lying devil that challenges the deity and the sinlessness of the master is Antichrist spirit. So for a Christian quote, and I say, quote Christian musicians, I don't, I don't accept that when they say stuff like that. You're making money. You're just out making money. And first thing you need to do is shut up. There's something about the spirit of, of entertainers now. They think they, they, they think they're a know all about everything. You kind of go like this. You just shut up, you'd be all right. You know? They become an entertainer. They think they know more about global warming than anybody on the planet. While they fly their jet to the global warming uh, convention. Put out more fluorocarbons and, you know, uh, stuff into the atmosphere than I will in 30 years on my car on one trip. But they're going to save the planet while they burn it up. Then I start thinking, all they're doing is save the planet for themselves so they can have do all they want to do. But that spirit gets on people. They think they're, they think they're knowledgeable. Like, remember Peter, I mean, and the disciples? They took note of them, but they were ignorant and unlearned men, but they'd been with Jesus. We need to be with Jesus. We need to be in the Spirit. Can you say amen? But ye beloved, the word, we, we, we taught this before, but you know. <laughs> well, thank you. Yeah, right there, Acts 4.13. They were ignorant and unlearned men. They marveled and took knowledge, and they had been with Jesus. But back over in Jude, it says they build themselves up, charged like a battery. How important is this for us to be in the Spirit? How important is it for us to have the Spirit of truth upon our life? For us to be in the realm of the Spirit so that we can have that advantage of ministry to the world. See, the devil's got the church so discombobulated, we can't get it together to go reach the world. Much of the American church has become that way. Well, you know, you got all kinds of excuses. Let me say this. The Lord tried to correct it before it happened. 1987, plans, purposes, and pursuits, that vision for camp meeting in 1987, eventually put in the book. They wouldn't sell. Brother Hagen had them. Would not let them sell the tapes in the convention. Couldn't order them. I, th I think the people there could get them, but you could, if you weren't there, you couldn't get them. And there, there was a reason behind that, because people hear stuff outside the setting and they'll, they'll misinterpret. So then they put it in the book form where they could control how it was said and what was said so there was no mistake of what was trying to be said and release the book. Now, I did get a copy of the tapes. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if that's sin or not. Somebody laid them and got me a copy <laughs> years ago. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Sometimes I, I, have, I don't know if I ever listened to it. I felt so bad about having them. But I still have them somewhere. Forgive me, Lord. <clears throat> I'll just read the book. <laughs> but he was trying to correct it before he got out of kilter then. Hello? We just kept pushing it and kept pushing it and kept pushing it. You know, the Lord lets you do what you want to do. But 
we in the church. I don't know if you've noticed that there's something, in, there's a restlessness in the church. I said there's a restlessness in the church. Why is there a restlessness? Because we keep looking for something the church at large is not giving anymore. We're giving them brass instead of gold. We're giving them something that looks religious, sounds religious, appears it could be religious, and is void of something called the anointing. We're more concerned about the fact that we can drink wine and go to heaven no matter how many women we're sleeping with. Hello. Then we are about coming out from among them and touching not the unclean thing and being separate, says the Lord of hosts. Living a, a, a life of separation from the world, from the taint of the world, and living in his glory, and living in his presence. There's a restlessness because much of the, quote, leadership of the church today is more interested in how many back ends they can put in the building than they are how many lives that can be transformed by being in the presence of God so that Jesus is magnified and Jesus is glorified and Jesus is exalted. And men are drawn. They would follow him into the wilderness. They would follow him out of the cities. They would follow him by the thousands because the religious institution of their day was not giving them what they needed. Raping them of their money. Giving them nothing in return. Then Jesus came. Pre pre uh, preceded by John. The voice of one crying in the wilderness, make you straight the paths of the Lord. Amen. And then Jesus came. Behold the Lamb of God, which takes away the sin of the world. It was a transference to Jesus from John of the followers, of the disciples, of the people. Amen. John came and challenged the institutions who were so ingrained in the political system and the political world, they, didn't, they dared not say anything against Herod or Pilate or anybody. Until John the Baptist showed up, got his head cut off for it. And then when Jesus came, the religious leaders had him crucified. And listen, the church world will crucify people who don't, who don't go their narrative. But that's okay because the world needs what we have. And we're going to take it to them. We're going to, as a congregation, and those who hear the sound of our voice, and will hear what the Spirit of the God says to the church. We are going to yield ourselves to his voice, to his leading, to his guidance. We're going to be anointed and have the advantage to minister to those people. Isn't it good when you show up to a fight and you've got the advantage? Amen. We want to have the advantage. Can you say amen? It's always good to be the one that has the advantage. You can't lose. How many of you ever watched Duke basketball? All the rest are on their side. They always have the advantage. It's hard to play five on eight. That's just my Carolina stuff coming out. This is a good example. You know it, and I know it. They all know it. Even Duke people know it. They won't admit it, but they know it. I've never seen anybody can be able to control the official as much as Krzyzewski in all my life. Never, I just haven't, I've, just, I've never seen another coach that could do it like that. Do what? Jesse said it happened at Durham Academy too. His daughters went to Durham Academy and they went and played them. They got the same kind of calls. And they did the same thing. He did gym up like 20 degrees above normal to sweat the team out. I'm just, I'm just being silly now. They create an advantage.
It's already out there on my, on my leader. All my, all my Duke fans are going to get bad with me. Well, that's all right. You know, I love you anyway. I'm just speaking the truth. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah, that, that's right. Who wants to be a devil anyway? The Duke Blue Devils. Larry's just back there cringing. Uh, don't bother him anymore. He used to be a Duke, Duke, Duke fan. There's a couple things happened. He got, he got unduped. He got disduped. Now, but when you show up for a fight, when you show up for something, you have the advantage. Then you're master of the situation. You go to a fight and you got a sawed-off sh- double-barrel shotgun, and the guy's got a pocket knife. You got the advantage. You're not really scared if he pulls out that pocket knife. Kind of like Crocodile Dundee. Remember that? Give it to him. Give it to him. Why? He's got a knife. What? That's not a knife. That's a knife. You know, it's a bush knife. Guy dropped his knife, the little thing he had, and took off running. See, when you had the. When we go into the things of the Spirit, when we go to fight against the enemy, when we go to minister life to people, the manifestation of the Spirit gives us the advantage. Holy Ghost, wonderful Holy Ghost. Thank God for the Holy Ghost. We have the advantage in ministry by being in the Spirit. Devils are in trouble when we show up in the Spirit. We're not helpless. We're not left with, I don't know what to say or what to do. We take no thought what you should say in that hour. Well, the Spirit's going to give you the words to say. The Spirit of God's going to be in manifestation. How? Because we build ourselves up on our most holy faith. We're not drunk with wine, but we're filled with the Spirit. The Holy Ghost has come on us. We've been speaking mysteries with the Father to find secrets with the Most High. We've been in His presence and His glory. Let me show, you know, we shared this, but when they came to take Jesus and capture Him in the garden, led by Judas, and he came and kissed him on the cheek. And he looked at the soldiers and said, who do you seek? I think King James says, whom seek ye? And they all went back to the ground. They all fell down. Now, he could have walked, he could have just walked off. But his, his purpose was to go to the cross. He could have just walked off right there. They were all out, passed out in the ground. He said, I lay it down and I take it up again. No man takes it from me. Hallelujah. And when you are in ministry with the advantage, the anointing of the Spirit of God, His manifestation in and through your life, you are an advantage to minister to unsaved people, people who need God, who need a relationship with the Father through Jesus Christ. And the Spirit of God puts you in that place of advantage for ministry. She don't need to be slick and come up with some little cute saying. Hello. You just need to go anoint it. You just need to go anoint it. Because then you have the advantage. Because you've got ears to hear what the Spirit is saying. And you got the devil on the run already. And no matter how much he resists, he's at the disadvantage. How do you know that? We never got down there to it, but First John 4, verse 4. Ye are of God, the, well, let me read verse 3, you didn't read that. And every spirit that confesses not that Jesus Christ has come is not in the flesh and is in the flesh and is not of God. And this is the spirit of Antichrist, wherever you heard that it's come and even now is in the world already. But ye are of God, little children. And have overcome them. Who? Those that are in the world operating under the spirit of Antichrist. 
Because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. You've got the advantage. The greater one's in you. Stir him up. Stir up your, your, your awareness of him. You need to be aware of his presence. Oh, my. He's the greater one. He's not the lesser one. The lesser one's been defeated. The lesser one operates in the children of disobedience. But the greater one's in you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so when you show up the ministry, they might gnash and gnarl and, 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 and gape upon you with their mouths, but greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. And they might cuss at you and they might see you and they might uh, squirm like a devil, snake devil. But the greater one's in you. And you possess the authority to overcome and to win, and to preach the truth. Remember that, that, that's that uh, um, the, the uh, deputy of the governor withstood Paul. He said, old child, full of the devil. Resi I'm going to paraphrase a little bit. You're resisting the work of God and uh, sent him away blind for a season. A mist came on. And the governor was astonished at this. Remember this? At the doctrine of the Lord. <laughs> That'll mess up some of you. We don't believe in the power of God stuff. He was astonished at the doctrine of the Lord. This is how it's stated. Y'all find that? Yeah. The deputy, when he saw what was done, believed. believed. He got the guy saved. Now, the guy that was deceiving him didn't get saved. But he was, saw what was done. He believed being astonished at the doctrine of the Lord. Why? Because Paul had the advantage over that guy operating in demonic power to deceive and keep people out of the kingdom. Amen. I said amen. It's 1230, right? Is that what it is? I'm just warming up. I'm just warming up. Have I really preached that long? Does it seem like that long? I thought it was maybe 10 after 12. I didn't realize it was 1230. We'll sit there and get, get your grip, Melody. We're going longer. Praying in the Holy Ghost. Being in His presence having the advantage for ministry. This is what God wants. We're not Pentecostal so we can brag about the fact we speak in tongues. To go tell everybody that doesn't speak in tongues that we got something you don't have. This is not a nana nana boo boo thing. Are you here? I know a lot of good, good, wonderful people who love Jesus, serve him with all their heart, who are not baptized in the Holy Ghost, speaking in tongues. They're walking in the light they have, and they love the Lord. I'm not better than them. We're not better than them. We've seen things in the Word. We're walking in light that they may not be walking in, but they still love Jesus. We're not against them. They're, they're for the same thing we are. That's getting people into the kingdom. Amen? Good people. Love Jesus. Amen? Serving the Lord with all their heart. Yet we're walking, we're walking in some light that we have, and we need to walk in that light. So we can continue to have the advantage over the enemy. Amen. I said amen. Glory to God. I want everybody baptized in the Holy Ghost speaking in tongues. You know what? I mean, that'd be, that's just wonderful. But at the same time, we're not, we're not, we're not here to fight them. We're going to win the battles over the enemy and get people saved. 
Glory to God. I said glory to God. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for the word. We thank you for this time together. We thank you for the spirit of God. We thank you for what you're doing in our hearts. Thank you for what you're doing in the church. Thank you for the stirring up that's taking place. Thank you that we're going to walk in the light and be in the light as you're in the light. And then we'll, that we will walk in the power of the advantage granted unto us by your spirit to win the lost, to bring them into the kingdom, to establish them in the kingdom of God through the word lifting Jesus up and the work of the Spirit that you all and woo them in. In Jesus' name. Amen, 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 amen. Amen? Hallelujah. 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 We thank you, dear Father. We sure love y'all. Thank y'all for joining us today. Thank you for this. Speak blessing over you. I encourage you to pray in the Spirit more than you've ever prayed before. Things are going on in the earth. We need our advantage. I said the things that are going on in the earth, we need our advantage. And what that advantage will do in you is to strengthen, encourage, look for a different word, give you the confidence stand against the enemy knowing you have the advantage in Jesus name because of the greater one in you hallelujah I bless you in the name of Jesus join us again next time Wednesday night Bible study every Wednesday night Bible study the past couple weeks please watch us on the uh, Facebook page go back and look at it but talk on the tithe and I'll be honest with you it's the best teaching on the tithe I've ever done it is, it's it's better than I've ever done. I've taught on tithe over the years, but this is just, there's an anointing on it that, that I'm just, it's just things the Holy Ghost is bringing out. So really the best, best teaching on the tithe has ever come through me by the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. There's just stuff being brought out by the power of God, by the Spirit of God that's just marvelous. I'm getting blessed teaching it. Yep. Yep. Like some preacher said, did I say that? Hallelujah. Praise God. All right. So if you have, you can go back on Facebook page and pick it up. It's out there archived. Is it out there? The last two Wednesday nights. Okay, so you, you want to get it up there? Huh? I'll give Brother Bill the SD card and let him put it up there. All right. It'll be out there. Brother Bill gets a hold of it. It'll be out there this afternoon. Is that right, Brother Bill? He knows how to get stuff out there in a hurry. All right. Let's all stand up. Uh, because the short winded did not show up this morning, some of y'all get it eventually, we must break down quickly. All right? So next time, this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. We love you. God bless you. See you next time here at Faith and Victory Church. Have a wonderful week in the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen.